Great. We're going to get started here. Welcome, everyone. We're so excited that you're here for our session today on delivering faster customer value with our partners in Marketplace. My name is Allison Johnson. I am with the AWS Marketplace channel team. I've been with um, AWS for six years, and my team manages all of the America's channel partner relationships on Marketplace. Hey, everybody. I'm Jim Halu. I head up worldwide public sector for the AWS Marketplace. Been with AWS about three years. Super excited that you joined us here today. You're probably here to see this guy. So I'm Randy Nixon. Uh, if you looked at this online, you may have just looked at it and said, what the heck is Digital Futures? I'm the director of Digital Futures. Uh, we didn't advertise it there, but you'll see it on the slides here. Was, we're from the Central Intelligence Agency. Uh, my job at CIA is to find private sector solutions to our mission problems. Awesome. All right. So I'll just go through a quick little agenda. I'm going to go through um, some IDC, Forrester, Gartner slides, some stats that you're all probably aware of about the importance of the cloud and why our customers are coming to Marketplace. I'll then hand it off to Jim, who will talk about some of the features and the functionality we built for public sector in our catalog. And then we'll hand it over to, to Randy to tell his story of how he's using ISV partners and the Marketplace to modernize his uh, procurement process for the CIA. So first up, IDC, as you all know, you're here. 75% um, of organizations will have a comprehensive digital implementation transformation roadmap, right? So customers, partners are moving in this direction. And so you all know that because you're at reInvent learning about it, right? Optimize at scale. So Gartner predicts that 14.2% of the total global enterprise IT spending will be dedicated to the cloud in 2024, up from 9.1% in 2020. So if you think about that, you know, Marketplace is about 10 years old. APO, our, our partner network, is uh, 10 years old. And AWS is about 20 years old. We're still so much at the beginning of this journey, right? Think about SMB customers that haven't even started. You guys are all thought leaders here, learning about the cloud, learning about how to work with AWS early on in this migration. OK, and then while our customers really rely on the agility and the speed of the cloud, control and governance is also a really key factor for them. Right? Our average customer has about 600 SaaS applications they're trying to manage. I mean, think about that. That's 600 renewals that they have to manage and deal with every year. Right? We have a bank that has about 4,000 ISVs they're working with. So they're looking for a platform where they can buy some licenses at full price, negotiate private offers if they want to for high, you know, high value opportunities. Um, be able to buy everything in one place from a trusted source like AWS Marketplace. So this slide just really speaks to, you know, that piece of like, you know, they want the agility and the speed, but they also need to be able to govern, like, who's buying that? What line of business person is buying that? It doesn't always go through procurement, right? So we have a lot of those tools that our customers rely on as they're procuring off of Marketplace. And what is Marketplace? I'm sure most of you know. It's a curated catalog of software, professional services, and data that our customers go to as they're um, migrating workloads to the cloud. We are deployed in all the regions of AWS. We have thousands of ISVs, data providers, and consulting partners, <coughs> thousands of transactable listings, many active subscriptions, 350,000 active customers. Um, when I started 10 years ago, it was a full price platform. We didn't have any of the features that we have today. It's been a really exciting time to see the journey and how quickly that the platform has grown over the past 10 years. And we still have so much more to do. So um, probably many of you have heard that you know, our customers um, are able to retire um, EDP benefits from AWS using Marketplace. And last year, we really wanted to dive into more about, like, is it just that, or what else are they getting out of it? So we commissioned a study with Forrester Consulting. There were two parts of it. There was a thought leadership study where we surveyed about 750 cloud alliance managers, cloud leaders within our customers, um, and sent them a survey. We also interviewed a number of our customers for their feedback on their total economic return on Marketplace. The thought leadership study was really just an assessment of what do you feel about cloud marketplaces? Do you like them? Are you using them? On this slide, you can see 86% responded that um, my organization. Oh, they are? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hopefully, that hasn't been that way the whole time. <laughs> it has. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, OK, so 86% have said, you know, my organization is investing in new procurement channels to improve its business agility. 
and 85% said they're investing in new procurement channels to improve their speed. So if you think about that, you know, customers are modernizing, they're, they're using AWS for the speed and agility of moving their workloads over to the cloud. They can spin up an instance of EC2 within a couple of minutes. But if it takes them three to six months to negotiate a, um, you know, opportunity, you know, to, to spin up some software, that kind of like defeats the purpose, right? And so our customers are not only moving workloads to the cloud, but they're also modernizing their procurement process. So the speed and agility is super important to them. 78% responded that online marketplaces for data and or cloud software procurement decrease their organization's risk profile. So, you know, we hear from our customers, everything goes through procurement, but then I have these line of business managers that are buying too. I'm trying to assess that, you know, and figure out who's using what. But reality is, is that a lot of our customers really value the due diligence that AWS gives to our ISVs and testing their products, making sure they run really well within the cloud and within the AWS cloud. If there's any vulnerabilities, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll take down their listings if there's problems. So our customers really trust that the products have been vetted by AWS. And then as far as um, benefits seen by our customers, we interviewed a number of our customers from the financial services industry, oil and gas, media and entertainment. And um, they said that over, we, we looked at their three year usage of marketplace across 18 transactions on average for each, and they experienced a 550 times ROI payback less than six months after they started working with Marketplace. And to kind of summarize that study, and both of these slides have links to the study if you want to get them, so um, you can take pictures of those. But to summarize kind of this study in total, 75% reduction in onboarding effort for new vendors with things like our standard contract that allows um, customers and ISVs to come to terms much faster. 65% time savings due to procurement efficiencies, you know, doing away with the PO process, the back and forth negotiations and increased licensing flexibility leading to 10% reduction in licensing costs. So both studies, we really wanted to kind of dive into a lot of what our customers were experiencing using with Marketplace, and I think they're really worth looking at if you want to um, take a look at them. So I've talked about analysts, I've talked about Forrester, and now I'm gonna hand it off to Jim, who's gonna talk about how we have um, you know, built new features and functionality for public sector customers. Thank you, Allison. You're welcome. Hey, everybody, a quick question. Quick show of hands. I can't believe it. Love it. Randy, good news. All right, how about from the channel side of the world? Resellers, distributors, cool, awesome. And of course, customers. Thank you, good stuff. Good. So we've been at this for about 10 years. Kind of hard to believe. We just celebrated Marketplace's 10th birthday back in August. And when we launched, we had three categories. Allison's slide earlier said we're up to 65 categories of software and continuing to grow and innovate. Another thing happened about 10 years ago. It's actually 11. Does anybody recognize the name Vivek Kundra? So Vivek was the first chief information officer for the United States of America under the Obama administration. One of the first things Vivek did when he was in office is he wrote a document called Cloud First. If you haven't read it, look it up. It seems as if it was written yesterday. So his initiative was, how do we get the federal government out of the data centers and leveraging the cloud technology that was taking off back then? And if you kind of look back, one of Allison's slides also referenced, 14.2% of the IT spend is on cloud. Doesn't really add up, does it? We've been at this for 10 years, we've had federal initiatives, a lot of this energy and enthusiasm, but only 14.2% of the spend is there today. But we've been working really hard and listening to customers about what is it that's needed to speed that innovation, to speed that move to cloud. Uh, there's a fun little stat within AWS that 90% of the things that we build are based on input from customers, from you guys out there. You tell us what you're looking for, things that are in the way, and we build that. The other 10% are actually things that kind of bridge the technology that kind of help that. So everything that we build is built with you in mind to speed that cloud journey. So when we look at this decade of innovation, um, I'm a, I'm a channel guy, so like my life has been in the channel. When, when Marketplace was originally built, I'm a little ashamed to say, it was built to replace everybody in the middle. The original engineers and the original six pager was like, we're gonna create an Amazon.com type experience where you can find software, click and buy it and launch it. And everybody in the middle would go away. Didn't work, right? So you think about it, that government doesn't buy that way. We have systems integrators, we have resellers, we have a, a whole host of folks that bring value to that whole migration path. 
So we listened. And we started building features that helped our customers buy the way they want to. So one of the things that we built was called a private offer. So a private offer in concept is super simple. Uh, government never pays full list price, and government often never accepts just straight up EULAs. So the private offer allowed the government and the ISV community to, to leverage that most favored nation pricing, bring in that terms of service in EULA that they've already negotiated, and put it into a URL that allows that contracting officer to review it, make sure it has the right numbers, launch it on that AWS uh, payer account, and the technology moves and la launches in region. Super cool. 98% of the business that takes place in public sector takes place that way. Shortly after that, our, our consulting partners raised their hand going, hey, governments outsource their cloud contract to me, the channel partner, and I'm bringing technology in. How, how are you going to help me do that? So we built CPPO, which is the channel partner version of the private offer to enable our channel partners to do exactly that same thing. So we're listening, and, and if there are things that we're doing today that are still getting in the way, let us know. We'd love to figure out how to solve that so we can speed that innovation. If we look back to 2016, another very important event happened. The CIA and AWS came together and launched what's known as C2S, an air-gapped region that allows the national security intelligence community to leverage the power of cloud. It was, I mean, if you go back and read the news back then, it was really, really big news back then, and guess what? It's still very, very important today. As part of that launch, Marketplace was built into that, uh, into that region. So it was the ICMP, the Intelligence Community Marketplace. And what we did was we brought in as many technologies that we could into that air gap region to help our national security mission do the important things that they do. So I'm super excited to have Randy from the CIA's Digital Futures team on stage with us today to talk a little bit more about some of the things he's been working on there. So I do not have slides because being CIA to show slides here would take me 12 steps of security and it's just not worth it. So I have a little bit of old school cards. If you want to take pictures of these cards, sure, I'll hold them up for you. <laughs> so I explained what Digital Futures was a little bit ago. Probably the next thing you're thinking is this dude does not look like Jason Bourne or James Bond. Lucky for me, my wife disagrees with you. She loves me and she wears glasses, so that helps. <laughs> I want to quickly introduce two of my colleagues that are here with me. They do not look like James Bond either. Uh, Raj and Danielle. I want you to know them so you can talk to them at the end of this. We have these cards for you that explain how easy it is to work with us. I'm going to talk a little bit about that here, but we have these for you to take away to make it even easier. So you're probably used to the government coming to you and uh, they say, I'm from the government, I'm here to help. They never are. Even I, from the government, don't believe it when I hear that. Instead, I'm from the government, I need your help. And now your next question is, why the heck do I want to help this dude? Uh, two good reasons. One, we're making it easier for your company to compete and have the opportunity to make money. And uh, you didn't have those opportunities before because usually we just built it ourselves, stayed behind our walls, or with a few of the companies that are really big and have lots of cleared contractors. I'm going to talk to you about ways you can do it without all that today. So it's about opportunity. You're going to hear that word from me a lot. Second reason is we're in a technological race with the rest of the world in a way we have not been since the launch of Sputnik. Uh, if you've watched any other speeches from the head of the Director of Digital Innovation, Jennifer Eubank, she talks about now being a second Sputnik moment. Um, I won't go deep into it. She does. Her things are out there. But it is about us being able to keep pace with innovation and the technology. I can't do that without you. We can't build it ourselves all anymore. And it's about protecting democracy and capitalism. Capitalism should be important to all of y'all because, again, it's about you having the opportunity to make money, me having the opportunity to get your innovations. Um, so digital futures, we are an impatient lot. So there are other parts of the agency. You'll see some of them running around. Uh, if you have booths, they may have talked to you already today uh, about how they can work with you, too. Our special sauce is we're trying to do things in three to four months. So uh, I am an impatient man. Raj and Danielle are equally impatient. Uh, if we need to do something very bigger and long term, you'll hear from CIA Labs or ITE or other places. I'm trying to find solutions now. And we have several means to do that that have really thrown gasoline on the acquisition process for us. 
In the past, we'd put out a market survey. Two months later, I would know companies who could compete, just could, not even necessarily are going to, for our work. Then we're going to talk to companies and we're going to make sure you have clearance and have all your security paperwork done, and that's a long process. And then we're going to put out an RFI, and several months later, I've got your stuff back. So now I'm up to six, eight, ten months if I'm lucky. And then we're going to go through the rest of that process, and two years later, we get to start talking about working with you and then working to get you cleared for our systems. Again, I'm impatient. We've developed other means, and that's what I'm going to go over, and then we're going to talk some more about AWS. So first, digital futures. Uh, since November, we've really energized our commercial engagement team. Our commercial engagement team has two ways that we do our processes. The first is a solution in search of a problem. I don't love this one, but it actually works. And what I mean by that is companies write us every day. I mean, I'm on LinkedIn. We're out in the open. We have to be to find the companies to, and to reach out to you. Or they write my boss and she sends them to us or anybody else in the agency. They're passing the information to us. We then send you a form, one page, very easy information where we can make sure your company is actually you know, from a country we can work with. You'd be surprised. Um, and then we give you the chance to send us slick sheets. Uh, we don't want proposals at this point, but slick sheets. And every Thursday, we put out a note that goes out through the entire agency uh, where our mission partners, customers, rest of the part of the agency can then reach back out to us and say, I want to meet that company. I was hesitant that this would work and was completely wrong. Raj was right. He runs that process for us. We're averaging three to four company meetings, opportunity again, between mission partners who have a problem and your company through that means. The other way is a problem in search of a solution. This one I love. So we created a broad agency announcement. Um, it's called a BAA. If you don't know what that is, that's fine. Um, for us, it's called Digital Hammer. I'm going to just call it Digital Hammer from here on out, or just Hammer. The form we have for you, that explains to you how to register to be on part of that. That, that launched in May. So in May, we had zero companies that could compete for our work. Uh, today, there's over 300 and it's growing exponentially every week. I hope from making contacts here and us going around the Expo Center that we hit 400 before the end of the year, and it just keeps growing. Well over half of those companies have never even been a sub for us. And what we're doing in the, with Digital Hammer is we're telling you in an unclassified manner what our problem is. Again, we're being open. Now, it may sound weird what we're saying. I mean, it will make sense to you. It doesn't make sense always even to us when we say, we're looking for private sector solutions for automated alerting across at least 10 stovepipe data sets on an ArcGIS platform. People who do Arc understand what I'm saying. Uh, even inside my building, the people who are running the tool, which just has a one name, um, didn't understand it completely. We got 15 really great ideas from that. And that was our first one we ever put out. Our last one got 27 ideas. So as more companies, more ideas. So I'm going to walk you through the process and tell you how fast we can go this way. So our most recent one, it hasn't completed, but I'm going to use it as the example. We asked for private sector solutions for finding foreign bots and social media. There are a lot of y'all who do that. Um, we need to do it. We need to do it better. We had uh, 27 solicitations come in. So we put that thing out, 30 days. Y'all had 30 days to give us a five page, no more than five page Word document on what you could do. When we sit down, and if we put it out, our mission partner has money set aside to go here. So again, opportunity. We won't put it out without money behind it. What we do then is us, the Office of Advanced Analytics, that's the one who had this problem, and our IT partners, we sit down and we review those papers and we are going to select between zero and five, so we could stop at this stage, to ask for full proposals. So you have another 30 days at that point, those five that get selected, to send us back the full proposals. Uh, here's something else that's different. Normally, if you get turned turned down, you just get a call or a note from our IT shop or our contract shop that says, nope, sorry, you didn't make it through. Um, BAAs are not um, challengeable. So if you call us, we'll give you a little more feedback than that. So that's new. That's open. That's the agency doing things differently. We get the RFI in. We're going to take two weeks. We spent two weeks in between the other two to review it ourselves. And then we're going to ask for proof of concepts, um, either ze from zero to three. We're still narrowing things down. Uh, in this case, we're going to ask for two. That companies, those two companies, from 27 to two now, 
are gonna have 45 days to prepare their proof of concept and then demo it for us. At that point, we have sole source justification, OA takes over, they can bring you in. Quick, a lot better than the 18 months that it could have taken the other way out. Our other way of doing things is we have our own laboratories, because not everything has a private sector solution today. So we've had a lab for two years, it's the Northern, Northern Virginia Innovation Exchange. We used to also have one in California. We closed that one, if you happy to answer questions about that later. It's the, that was the Silicon Valley Innovation Outpost. Um, but Index, it's accomplishing over 20 projects a year. It's got a backlog of over 20. So doing what we've been doing with Hammer, we decided we needed to open the aperture to work with more labs. All these companies have commercial labs. I can't throw a rock from our building in Reston without hitting another commercial lab. So we're gonna put out BAAs that are designed for laboratories so we can partner with you to develop prototypes. Um, we may put some of those out classified, which will narrow our scopes. So we try to avoid it, but there's some projects that are just gonna be that. Speaking of classified, I'll go back to that very first example I gave you, the ArcGIS problem. So some of these, aren't going to go from us putting it out to white paper to RFI, blah, 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 so source. Um, just doesn't work that well uh, for some problems. So what that first one did, so don't be surprised, is we put it out and we got 30 questions about what our back end is. I can't tell you that because then it would be classified and then you wouldn't even have a chance to compete. Um, we, of those 19, we were really surprised. And, that's the re and I love that because that's why we're doing this, to be surprised by your answers. We, had, we expected software solutions, and we got a lot of them. And there were three really, really good ones. And we got three or four redesigns of our back end, even though they didn't know what our back end was, which blew us away. And also made it where we needed to talk at a classified level with them. So we narrowed down to the full proposals, we did that, and we stopped, and then we moved to classified discussions. So that can happen too. To be on Hammer, it's one page you have to fill out for us. It's the exact same page we're gonna give you when you talk to us for the very first contact with a commercial engagement. So again, we make it super easy. Uh, and we're gonna move things along. So Marketplace, you've heard a lot about that. Jim's gonna come back and go in more detail on it. We like Marketplace as well. Uh, the agency's about to have multi-cloud. It makes it very awkward for me here because my contract staff is like, if you say AWS, you gotta say the others too. There's five, I'm not gonna say each of their names, but they're all gonna have marketplaces too. It's amazing, because we can put out things to the marketplace that might be even a little more complicated, and then the bigger places, like Amazon, can help people team. So one of the biggest questions I get when I'm doing these, and I'm gonna talk, not talk about marketplace anymore here, because I don't wanna steal Jim's thunder, is, Randy, I'm on marketplace. Why do I need to be on Digital Hammer? Or Randy, I'm a, I work with InQtel which we work, we partner very closely with InQtel. Why do I need to be on Digital Hammer? Or you name whatever excuse you want. And let me go back to that opportunity. You wanna be highlighted throughout our building as much as you can. So be on Marketplace, be on Hammer. If you're on InQtel, great. If you win a, one of our proposals, we don't have to worry about sole source. Then we got a work program from InQtel. But it's helping you know what our problem is and helping Raj advertise your solutions to our problems. As much as you can do that, the better. So it's all about opportunity. It's all about democracy. It's all about capitalism. It's all about cash for y'all. For me, it's about innovation. With that, back to Jim. Thank you, Randy. So who's heard of Digital Futures before? Yeah, so that's part of the challenge, right? So in this community, information is not as easily accessible in a lot of other places. And that's where I think we can help. I've got a team, the AWS National Security Group has a large uh, group of, of technical resources, sales resources, BD resources that are literally walking the halls of the agency every day, meeting with folks like Randy and his team, and, and we have the ability to provide insight and guidance. So if, if you need to learn more about this, if you've got technology that you think would be helpful into this mission, this very important mission, let us know, use the resources. Many of you are in the APN family, so like take advantage of what we have because the Digital Hammer program is an amazing program that gets you in the, in the places where people are trying to solve mission, right? So they're looking for technology and they're trying to find ways to, to break down barriers that historically, by design, the CIA has tried to protect things. 
but now they know that innovation is critical. So use the resources that are available, and if you've got questions, please reach out to me and my team. So just a quick high-level high overview. So if you think about a, 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 you know, the high side or air gap region, whatever the terminology you want to use, there's a couple way technology moves in there. So by design, it's disconnected from the internet. So if you think about traditional software, a lot of how we work in the commercial world is you download keys and software moves across and you upload it and everything's happy and you've got your security protocols. Here, in the absence of tools like Marketplace, you're downloading information on the low side, sneaker netting it in through clearance and uploading, uploading it on the high side. It takes time, it's inconsistent, the, the processes are not smooth or streamlined. So what we've tried to build with the AWS Marketplace, the ICMP version of it is, a consistent way to move technology into the region. Similar to the way you list in, in your commercial marketplace, the listing process for ICMP is, is similar. There are a couple of additional checks that, that take place, like foci and things to make sure that the software and, and the organization that's going to run uh, on the high side has passed all the check marks. Uh, but we also help by providing clearances. So if you think about it, if you're going to be developing on the high side, you probably want technical people hands on keyboard in a skiff doing the things that they need to do to support. So if you list in ICMP, you have the opportunity to get two clearances. So we're doing everything we can to try to help this very important mission and to get the great technology that you've built in the hands of the folks who need it. Um, one of the tools that we built is this thing called AWS Diode. So that's the tool that helps move things from low side to high side. That's the, the way that we eliminate the sneaker net side of it. And there's a couple of cool white papers out there. So if you want to get uh, a little smarter on that, take a peek at AWS Diode. Uh, we just launched the secret region. So that supports our DOD mission. And we're very excited about that. A lot of launch partners there. But if you want to take a look at who's in ICMP today, uh, it's a pretty good group of folks across AI, ML, security, storage, networking, you know, the standard stuff. Here's my challenge to this community. This slide needs to be three to five times larger next year. I mean, Randy, Randy, how many folks do you have in Digital Hammer? Well over 300. 300. That should be easy. So 300 folks have already engaged with the CIA. They've already put together white papers. They have already identified mission that's out there. Let's see if we can streamline the way that that software gets procured and solve mission faster. All right, so let's wrap up real quick. So from an AWS Marketplace perspective, one of the primary reasons folks use us, we simplify procurement. There's been a lot of news about how we're compressing the time it takes from interest to software running. And I can tell you in my public sector business, 60% of the things that we're doing are around security ransomware, endpoint security, all of the things that are really relevant to the mission today. And if we can move that important software into customers' hands 50% faster, that's meaningful. So would love to talk to you about how we can get your software in Marketplace and get it into the hands of the folks who need it faster. The other thing, particularly important in kind of these economic times we are right now is, uh, you know, shadow, procurement, shelfware, there's a lot of things that are happening that when, when budgets get smaller, we have to minimize that. So when we centralize procurement and give you a single pane of glass to view your procurements and utilization through Marketplace, it gives the customers the opportunity to see exactly who's using what, and if there's too much, they can bring it down. If it's not enough, they can bring it up and it's real time. So let's use, particularly our taxpayer dollars, let's use them properly, and let's make sure we're spending them in ways where they're really needed. The final piece is kind of a shameless plug for my friends who built an amazing tool called Vendor Assessments. So if you're a buyer and you have to go through a lengthy process of uh, the Vendor Assessment security uh, forms, that every single one seems to be just slightly different and takes weeks and sometimes months to fill out, that's what this tool was built for. We're aggregating a whole bunch of data so that we can answer a question one time and it can cascade through the rest of it so that instead of spending weeks and months, you can spend hours. So vendor assessment is, is kind of the shameless plug of a, of a thing you should take a look at. And guys, why don't you come on up and uh, would love to open it up to questions. It's not often you have the CIA on stage to answer questions. Yeah. So would love for you guys to raise your hand and shout it out.